Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is a custom idea workshop. And in this workshop, I'm gonna show you how do you deal with a very difficult PDF file. And you do wanna import it, but none of the columns are lining up. There are multiple pages. It would take you forever to do manual. So how do you do it in idea? So let me show you the PDF file that I'm working with. You'll see here, really doesn't look that bad here. Looks like a standard report type format. You'll see that this middle area is really these uh, components, uh, loan, the type of loan. Um, oh, no, you can see right here, the, just the details uh, are aligned here. So you can see the description here it contains the, the lo loan type, interest rate, amount, and as well the year. You can see it looks, doesn't look that bad. But you can see here, these are opportunities where it can break. It looks really nasty um, and not very much fun. So how are we going to deal with this? So I'm going to get started. I'm going to show you how to do that in IDEA. So here I've already created an uh, IDEA project. In this case, I'm going to click on the import details. Oh, no. I'm going to click on PDF slash report. And we'll give that a minute to open up. It's kind of a large PDF file with several several pages. Okay, first thing we gotta do is define our different layers. So we're gonna create a standard layer here. And we can do a number of different things. Looks like there's no data in the first column. So we could do something as simple as doing trap for spaces. It looks like it worked. And then what we'll do here, instead of trying to define each column within this importer definition, which is going to be next to impossible to do, what we're going to do here is we're going to import it all at once. So I'm going to call this, we're going to call this details. And then we're going to save that layer. And next what we're going to do is define the customer ID, which you'll see here. So we're going to do this and create another standard layer. And, and then I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna define my trap to be any like non-blank here in the first column, and then we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna call this customer ID, and I'm gonna make that a character, and then as well, I'm gonna use values from the previous, and then we're gonna preview the database, and you're gonna see here. Uh, as well, it uh, filled in the blanks where there were, where there was none, where there were blanks there. Perfect. So it looks good to import. So we're going to import into IDEA. I'm going to save the template as loan details. It's not a problem. We're going to call it loan details. Uh, we don't need generating statistics since there's nothing really to look at here at this point. You see, it looks really messy. So how are we gonna deal with that? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull out this loan ID, which is this first set of numbers, first set of values. So here I'm gonna create a new col column, I'm gonna call it loan ID. Looks like it's gonna be a virtual character. Let's just make it 10 just to be safe. And then here, all we're gonna do here is we are going to find looks like when I look at the data that we're going to use a function called split. So I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to say split and I go all trim this data first details. And then what this is going to ask us is how we're going to split it. I'm going to say do the like no spaces there and then do space there. And I want the first section, first occurrence of that. So I want to find, this basically means at the beginning and then find the first space and then give me the first section of that. Oh, okay. Oh, looks like it's details. Sorry. And then as well, we can evaluate and go down to, looks like it's working out pretty well. Perfect. So now we have a loan ID. That looks good. 
Now let's pull out the loan type, which is this first first section. And again, we're gonna use our our splits. Let's, let's call it ten. In this case, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go split on details again. In this case, I know that this the description section where the student loan type starts starts with this uh, quotation. So instead of actually just directly typing in quotation, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do char 34. And what char 34 is the ASCII equivalent, which is basically the numeric equivalent of of double quotation. So I'm going to find the instance of that, and I want then I want to find an instance of the comma. So find me an instance and then I want the first instance of that. So find me the quote double quotation, find me the comma, and find me the first instance in between those two. And then what we can do is we can evaluate and we can see here it looks like it's working. And then we are gonna go loan percentage and uh, uh, actually I won't leave it as a I'll put it as a character for now, since we're going to pull percent sign as well. So when I look here, okay, so what do we need to look for? It looks like the first comma occurs, occurs there, so that's promising. And then as well, it's in between a percent sign. Okay, so let's try that. So what we're gonna do here is let's split this data, details, I'm gonna find the comma, and I'm gonna find the percent sign, and then I want the first instance of that. So let's take a look at that. Okay, it looks like it's carrying that extra space there, so let's all trim around here. Okay, it looks good. Okay, let's keep plugging away. Uh, let's go down to loan amount. Which is going to be the next area. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit tricky, but let's take a look. Okay, so this loan amount, what's what clues do we have? So we know that there's a percentage. Okay, that's good. Uh, we also know that there's commas after the amount, but you will we'll see that there's a comma in there. Okay, that makes it a little bit tricky. Um, we'll see a comma, we could do a split based off of the percent sign and comma, which looks like it's pretty pretty unique and we could probably take advantage of that. And then, but what are we gonna to do to find the end of that area? So we can't use comma because it will, when the amount's more than four digits, there's a comma in the amount. So what we're gonna to have to do here, let's try a couple things. Let's go split details. Uh, let's go percent sign, find an instance of that, and then find an instance, and it looks like at, if there, if it, the comma is after the amount, or the comma after the amount always has space there. So let's include a space there, let's find what that looks like. Okay, that looks promising. And now what I want to do is I want to convert this into a value, or convert it to a number. So I'm gonna use that value. Okay. Um, let me see here, I can go to, Looks like it's only taking the first two characters and ignoring the comma. So it looks like I have to get rid of that comma. So let's use remove on the space. Let's remove the comma. There you go, looks like it worked. So that was a little bit tricky one. Sometimes you have to find these patterns in order to actually be able to, to discover these things. So let's call next one user ID. Actually, I can't see the amounts, the description here. Let's call it user ID. Let's make it a virtual character. Let's make it five. And then here, how are we, how are we gonna find this one? Okay. Or, or we, oh, I guess we missed loan date. Okay, let's just go back and do loan date first. So 
So how are we gonna find loan date? Okay, so if I take a look here. Hmm. So what we could do is it has some slashes in it, which is promising, okay? That's gonna be useful. Also has, looks like it has the double quotation as well. So could we take advantage of that? Potentially. Um, so we could take advantage of when the quotation ends and then to the very end of the string, which would be just the double quotations, similar to like how we did at the beginning. So let me show you what it looks like. So we go split details, comma, at char 34, which is again the double quotation, do there. And then I want the second instance of that. So instead of being the first half, I want the second half. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's better. Let's put an all trim around that. Sometimes it's good to break it down into different components. So you're getting closer and closer. So now I don't have to worry about all this beginning garbage. I can just worry about this first section. So then I could simply even just do uh, something as simple as this. Take this whole amount right here, split it there, find where the first space is, give me the first section. Now I have the dates, okay? Now if I, for example, want to, uh, let's see here. Okay, let's convert it to a date. I'm not sure it's going to work with uh, extra. We'll see. So it's in that this format. It looks like it's airing out, and that's likely because it doesn't have that. Just a little bit worried whether or not. It'd work if there wasn't uh, two M's to let's see here. Okay. Um, what I can do is, uh, oh, okay. What I can do here is get fancy here and use a write function and then put a, a zero out in front and then Right before we convert it, say just give me the last eight characters, which is gonna be these three, these three, plus two. So if it already has eight characters, it's gonna ignore the zero. But if it doesn't, then it's gonna take advantage of the zero. That way I can leave it there. So it's more foolproof. So there you go. And then we are going to add in user ID. Character here, and I go five. Which I can't see the amount. I can't see the details. So let's go here. So you'll see the user ID is the second last set of numbers. So a couple ways we could try to take advantage of that. Okay, so let's take a look here. Sometimes it's it's simpler. Just to take advantage of what we had before, just so we can see the details. So if we go here, similar to how we did the dates, and we did details char 34 at char 34 two. Now I'm just left with that component. Let's just all trim this. I know it's going to look really long, but then when you actually take advantage of this evaluate, it actually allows you, to, allows you to see it a lot easier. And then what we can do here is, let's see here. We can then split it. Hmm. Okay, so we know that it's definitely going to start after the eighth character because here 
the date can only be maximum eight characters. So even if we did something like this, So, and then I did something like this. And then we did something like this. So I did the alt trim. I basically eliminated the, let me go find, do the space, do the first section, and we should be left with just the user ID. So take a minute to look through that. It's kind of a complicated um, split. There's probably easier ways of doing it, but just off the top of my head, that looks like the easiest way of doing it. And then here, the approver ID is always gonna be the last set of characters. So, so what we can do here is something as simple as this. So really, this is not, this is just a pattern, a pattern recognition game. So here, I'm gonna try to simplify it. I'm gonna go all trim around this details. And then we're gonna go right, comma two and then I'm just going to throw an all trim around there just so we can clean it up you'll see here now we have the approver ID okay and then what we're simply going to do next is we are going to then do a direct extract and I'm going to find everywhere where it is blank customer ID equals zero, which means that's not blank. And then as well, I'm going to exclude this details column and I'm gonna call this loan details filtered. Okay, there's a couple areas where it's, it's still giving it errors, but oh, regardless, it looks like it uh, worked pretty well. Obviously you can open up the raw data Take a look, see if it captured the details correctly. Look like it does. So let's see here. One nine student ID six six percent. Yep, yeah, fifteen thousand three hundred thirty-eight. Good, good, okay, let's do something more difficult. Let's do loan site, find loan 503. Okay, that should belong to 273. It's a payday loan, 11%, 559, uh, dated April 20th, 2011, approver, boom. Okay, looks like it worked. So I know there's a little bit of a complicated uh, um, import, but this is important to know because not all your PDF files are going to be in ideal state and it's just going to allow you to be able to use these powerful tools in more situations if you're able to deal with and troubleshoot uh, with these types of data sets. So hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.